Dr. Delek, there's a popular notion that leaders are made, not born. So in today's Tibet TV's weekly analysis, let us discuss its relevance and the role of Tibetan youth leaders with Mr. Satya Kumarji, who is associated with His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and Tibetan community in India. Welcome to Tibet TV, Mr. Satya Kumarji. Very good afternoon, uh, Eshiji. Uh, Satya Ji, uh, you have been associated with Tibetan community in India and particularly, you had the privilege of interviewing His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. So, first of all, tell us uh, your association with His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and Tibetan community in India. It's been a very long association with uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama. And not only that, uh, His grace was always there since my childhood. It, it was like a blessing in disguise. In fact, uh, many people who meet me since my childhood say, I look like a Tibetan. That's what uh, is the kind of a karmic connection I could understand. So it happened uh, before 10 years that uh, one of my article on the Tibetan uh, community regarding the schools that you run about the uh, Tibetan uh, children village schools. I wrote, wrote about it and then I had a conversation with the Tibetans. That's, that was looked uh, by the Tibetan community in some of the settlements. And they were so impressed about what is the kind of a kind of a respect and the kind of the uh, uh, the honor uh, uh, I've given as part of the article, and many of them uh, called me up and said from the Tibetan uh, settlements and everywhere because my uh, mobile number was given in that. So everybody asked, uh, "This is a wonderful article." It reached the Tibetan uh, uh, government in exile in Dharamshala, and uh, His Holiness. Uh, his Holiness Dalai Lama, 14th Dalai Lama, uh, called up and uh, we met at Chennai once and uh, even before that I had a multiple meetings. So it happened that it happened so that uh, uh, in 2017, 2017-18, I had met His Holiness Dalai Lama for four to five times on uh, different occasions discussing on different issues for the Tibetan community. One of the important things that we discussed is about the importance of the financial inclusion to the Tibetan community, creating livelihood. So based upon that, he gave me a duty that it is a kind of a responsibility that I should take up in transforming the lives of the Tibetans. And I had a multiple meeting with the uh, Tibetan Planning Commission, which is there in Dharamshala. And I had a brainstorming session as well. They did come to Chennai. I introduced them to some of the consultants and later, of course, they took their own initiative. And today we have established a non-banking finance company for livelihood creation of the sweater sellers, which is uh, inaugurated by Lobzang Sangeji, uh, the, uh, prime, the, on, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of the Tibetan government in exile in India. So uh, this is a very important step that we took. It's a joint effort. Definitely the effort of the Tibetan government in exile was extraordinary in this uh, idea. And this was a commitment from my side to His Holiness that it is very important that we should create livelihood for the Tibetan community in exile, especially the settlements that are there in uh, Ludhiana, uh, the people who move from the settlements to Ludhiana to procure the sweaters and sell in Agra. And I've been to Bailakupi uh, to go and, uh, to address in the Tibetan Entrepreneurs uh, Conference, uh, Development Conference, Tibetan Entrepreneurs Development Conference every year, which is organized by again Tibetan government in exile by the Department of Finance. So I think these experiences gave me a lot of uh, inputs about the Tibetan community in general. And I had a multiple uh, occasions and uh, discussions with His Holiness Dalai Lama. And in his residence, I, uh, in fact, in that video, if you see, he holds my hands and says it is my responsibility uh, to revive the ancient Indian culture, the Nanda, Nanda tradition, and also to help the uh, young Tibetans to uh, become entrepreneurs and youth leaders. That was the commitment uh, he took from me. And I've been following up that commitment. I've been working with the Tibetan community. And I'm very happy, Ashi, I've been associated with you also. And I've been in Bangalore. We organized uh, youth programs under your uh, guidance and leadership. And I've been part of it. It is a wonderful journey together in the Tibetan community. I feel so happy to be part of the Tibetan community. I would say I'm, uh, I would say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Uh, and I feel proud to be part of the Tibetan community, Ashi. Okay, Satyaji, uh, you said that you have met His Holiness uh, several times and also uh, you are running a leadership training institute. 
So my next question is, what kind of leadership qualities we must take from His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama? The most important, uh, the leadership quality, a very important leadership quality is the empathy. The empathy that he carries for the cause that he has taken. Uh, he has been awarded a Nobel, uh, Nobel Peace uh, Prize because he had that quality of empathy. He, he stood for his people. He stood for his people. I would say he is a Mahatma Gandhi of uh, Tibet. He is a Mahatma Gandhi of Tibet. He stood for his people in the path of nonviolence, which is propagated by Lord Buddha himself. That is the, that is the essence of the Buddhism for which His Holiness Dalai Lama is standing as a great, uh, great icon of Buddha. And not only that, his teachings today have reached across the globe. Wherever he visits, millions of people come and listen to him. So that shows the law of attraction, the second important leadership quality that we must learn and admire from His Holiness Dalai Lama is the law of attraction. The attraction, you should magnetize people. His Holiness Dalai Lama will be able to interact with the President Obama. He will be able to uh, interact with the uh, presidents of various uh, countries and leaders of various countries. He will also be able to interact with the child immediately. And he can magnetize both. That is the kind of a personality we should become. The third important thing is the cause he stands for. He, st uh, stands, uh, he, he, communicates the, he communicates the cause he stands for. And he convinces the leaders about the cause th that uh, they should give a hand for. Today, all the leaders around the world of different countries are giving hand to His Holiness Dalai Lama because of his great communication skill. Along with the philosophical uh, ideas of Lord Buddha, which he communicates through his uh, sessions. And the, the, the fourth important thing that uh, the youth should learn from him is the, that the time he gives for everybody that the time he gives for everybody, the time he gives for everybody, because uh, if he gives an appointment, I have interacted with him for one hour, one hour, two hours and all. And when I've interacted with him, the amount of attention he pays as a leader, you must pay attention even to the humblest to origin is Holiness Dalai Lama. For example, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a youth. When I went and met him, he considers me so important and he communicates me and he gives importance to me. And he asked me whether I have taken food. And post the session, he gifted me with a lot of uh, items from his own uh, uh, living room. And I have it in my office. And I pray that uh, every day. And that is a kind of uh, uh, feel he gives. It's very, very important as a leader to bring that inclusiveness. We should give importance to the even to the humblest origin uh, uh, whom we meet. That I learned. In fact, his meeting has transformed my entire life. I, my, life can be, uh, my life can be divided or rather segregated between before I met His Holiness Dalai Lama, after I met His Holiness Dalai Lama. It's completely changed. The perspective, the ideas have become universal. Uh, and I've read the book of uh, Secular Ethics of His Holiness and that gave me an idea to include everybody in my agenda to try, uh, ensure that the transformation happens. Uh, to, for the betterment of the humanity. So the idea of we are one was the idea which I understood from His Holiness Dalai Lama Eshi. Uh, okay, Satyaji, uh, since you have visited many Tibetan communities in India, I'm sure you have also interacted with many Tibetan youth as well. So <clears throat> tell us, you, what is your impression of Tibetan youth? The, the first, uh, first important quality that the Tibetan youths are processing is the trust quotient. The trust quotient. If you see why this trust quotient they have, it is because of the philosophical backing of the Tibetan culture. That is the reason it is very, very important to revive the Tibetan culture. Why Tibetan culture is important? Because of the philosophical backing, which gives great leadership qualities to the youths of uh, Tibet and the people who are uh, outside Tibet, who are working for the cause of Tibet. So that is the main uh, uh, quality which I liked in Tibetan community. And the second is the hospitality. Second is the hospitality, wherein the amount of love and affection they show if you stand with them. You feel heroic when you work for their cause. And they stand with you. They stand with you. And uh, no, they not only stand with you, they think you are part of them. They think you are part of them. I have many friends in Chennai who are uh, from Tibetan community. Whenever I interact... Uh, 
and I go for the cultural programs organized by the uh, Madras uh, Tibetan, whoever is there in Chennai, uh, Tibetan community. When I go there, they take care of me very well. They, they give me a lot of kind of uh, attachment. They have an attachment on us. So I think this is a very, very important uh, quality of showing respect and honor to the, someone who's standing for them and they stand with you forever. So these are some of the two important qualities uh, which I uh, observe from the Tibetan uh, uh, youths. But one important thing that the Tibetan youths also should aspire for is to get educated with a higher level of qualifications, professional qualifications, the, uh, uh, management programs. They should, possess, uh, they should go and pursue management programs. They must pursue PhD. They must go to abroad and study in a lot of universities where, which grants a lot of scholarship to the Tibetan community. America supports the Tibetan community. Our own uh, leaders in uh, Tibetan government in exile are all educated from abroad and they are now working in Tibetan government in exile. And I think uh, studying in India, again, start going and studying in abroad, coming and working for the cause of Tibet, it is very, very important to possess highest level of qualification and should also get into entrepreneurship. Very, very important. Very, very important issue. Okay, Satyaji, uh, you are running uh, Swami Vivekananda Institute of Leadership and Governance. So my question is about leadership. So what is the main thing in leadership that you find most relevant to Tibetan youth leaders? The most important, uh, as we run this institute in the name of Swami Vivekananda, uh, Vivekananda School of Public Policy and Vivekananda Institute of Leadership and Governance, I can see the ideas of Vivekananda is the ideas of His Holiness Dalai Lama as well. The ideas are universal. The ideas are brotherhood. The ideas are acceptance. And the most important thing that the youths of uh, the Tibetan community should possess is the courage. Two, the conviction. Three, is the consideration. I call it as C3 formula for Tibetan youth. C3 formula for Tibetan youth. The C3 formula is courage on what you believe, what you work for. If you enter into entrepreneurship, if you enter into a profession, as a Tibetan, you must have the courage to pursue what you dream for. Imagination, working on a subconscious mind is very, very important. Two is the conviction. When you believe certain things, you should believe it as absolutely true. For example, if His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama is teaching about the philosophy of Buddha as part of his lectures, when you listen to him, it's very important you must develop conviction from his teaching. Of course, after examination of those ideas, what he gives. And three is consideration. After you develop uh, courage and consideration, it is just not important to work for your self-interest. It is also important to work for the enlightened self-interest. Very, very important. First step in any human being with respect to consideration is a consideration of self-care. He must take care of himself. He must possess wealth. After he crosses the stages of self-care, it is important to also have self-interest. and But that self-interest should not stop with him alone. It should become an enlightened self-interest to take the society along. Very, very important. So I think this three, C3 formula for Tibetan youth has to be brought in as a kind of a, 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 kind of a, a, kind of a program to ensure they understand this C3 formula so that the Tibetan youth, youths can pursue this idea. Yashi. Okay, Satyaji, how important is Tibetan youth leadership for the course of Tibet? It is very important. I think... Uh, Today, the uh, narrative of China, when, uh, when, uh, when, when Tibet was uh, in trouble, everybody th thought it's an isolated case. When Tibet was in trouble in uh, those times, everybody thought it's an isolated case of Tibet. But Tibet is important to entire Asia. Tibet is important to entire Asia because it's a water, uh, a water tower of entire Asia. The sources of various rivers, at least five, uh, perennial rivers or in Tibet. The entire reason that China uh, was focusing on Tibet is because those who control water in 21st century are going to control the entire continent. So it is important, it is a call to the entire Asia because 21st century is the uh, time for Asia. And when 21st century is the time for Asia, then it, it should not become the time for China because they control water. So if you have to if you have to ensure that the water problem doesn't water uh, if if you have to ensure that the China doesn't become a threat to the entire Asia and the world at large, it is very important to protect Tibet. 
whether it is america whether it is uh, japan whether it is singapore whether it is india whether it is uh, middle east countries has to understand this in a larger perspective those who control water will control the world so who is controlling the water in asia it is china so the tibetan news should understand it is a larger cause that they have taken this message has to reach to the nook and corner of india indian subcontinent in the first place it should reach to the other parts of the world it's very very important you speak about it daily because water is going to be the future and when all the perennial rivers have a source in tibet and it is a water tower of asia it is important to save first for the purpose of the humanity two for protecting the tibetan culture why tibetan culture has to be protected the purest form of buddhism as uh, brought out by lord buddha i can see it is in tibet the nalanda tradition so if nalanda tradition has to be protected it is the responsibility of indian government whichever party comes into power to protect indian value system which is in the purest form it is a responsibility of the indian government i think indian government also understand this now and they are taking lot of steps to ensure that the tibetan cause is uh, heard across the world but i would request the indian government to uh, also to think about how do we take this message to the entire world partnering with the tibetan community especially post covid 19 scenario we still have a doubt in uan if you see there is a virology institute and it's hard to believe that it is a natural virus because all the factors are failing around a virus because it is able to mutate and mutate and can affect every age group it seems to be a very scientific uh, process that's happening so we as a common man as an expert as an educated there is definitely an element of doubt when there is a virology institute and the the covid 19 is spreading across the world today it has shook the entire world the economy has come down today so it's very important to understand the threat of china the string of pearl strategy of china so to ensure that the china over a period of time doesn't dominate asia and also the entire world it is important to protect tibet and tibetan people and tibetan culture tibetan spiritual leader spiritual uh, tibetan political leaders it's very very important issue this message has to reach on every uh, to every citizen in india and also to all the people around all the leaders around the world including the g20 leaders and the european union leaders which is holding as dalai lama has taken up a cause and has been meeting various leaders around the world ishi uh, okay so dj this is my last question uh, since you are an indian youth leader how should indian and tibetan youth leaders work together for the cause of tibet and india security it's a uh, very important that the indian youth should understand about the string of pearl strategy of china and how they are looking at uh, colonizing different uh, neo capital model today you can see that's happening in africa where china is trying to colonize through a model called neo capitalism so it's very very important to understand this strategy and it's also very important to indigenize our industry so tibetan youth should try to become entrepreneurs and if you th- if you think as a tibetan if you think that you are a very small population always get the inspiration from parsi community i have been always saying this the parsis who came as a guest to our country today have built industries in india they have become top advocates in india so if they can do it you can do it that's the point so that inspiration of coming together for larger cause is very very important that's the reason i told uh, ashi i want every tibetan youth to pursue higher education the top post courses in the universities around the world they they should become journalists advocates they should fight for the civic rights and with whichever country they are in they should be recognized as leaders they are work they should work for the people and their uh, rights that's very very important and the second important uh, thing that the tibetan youths uh, should work with indian youths is about the security of the asia when i say security of the asia only when india is secured other countries are secure around so today you see the problem in south uh, south sea uh, china east uh, sea uh, uh, east east china sea and chabar uh, pass and you see many problems where and even problem in sri lanka for the tamil tamil uh, community if you see sri lanka the tamil community suffered because there is a directly or indirectly there is a funding that happened from china for the sri lanka and uh, the hambantota port in sri lanka 
is being controlled uh, by China. So it is very important to understand. So they take the control over the trade. They take up uh, control over the country through neo capital capitalist model, neo capitalist model. Three, they take the control of the people's data through their electronic products. Today they have become it, it, it they have become inevitable in the space of electronic manufacturing. Even after, uh, especially after COVID-19, you order any product, you find that China stamp on it. And Taiwan has understood the threat of China today. Thailand has understood the threat of China now. Hong Kong, you see what's happening. So the if you want to understand the Chinese narrative, it is important to understand the history of Tibet, how it was uh, affected by China. If you understand Tibet, you understand what are the problems China can create for the world. So it is very, very important as an Indian youth to understand Chinese strategies. Today, I will tell you the Chinese uh, entrepreneurs even know the festivals that are celebrated in India. That is the kind of intelligence they have because they manufacture products according to the local uh, festivals that are happening in India. So if they, can, they have such a kind of intelligence, it is very important as a Tibetan youth to get educated, to improve the innovation, to have that inspiration that you should do something for your motherland. It's very, very important. It is a joint effort that uh, Indian youth and Tibetan youth should come together as a cause over a period of time to, uh, to retrieve the philosophy, uh, philosophical land of Buddha. Buddha may be born in India, but Buddha is living in Tibet as a philosophy. So it is our joint effort. Not only uh, uh, India talks about making India, you all actually, many people, many of the Tibetans, it's a very, very important thing you need to understand. Many of the Tibetans come and say, we have come as a refugee here. You are not a refugee in India. You are our guest. Because you have our guest, you have our person in your land, the Lord, uh, Lord Shiva in Kailash. You are safeguarding him. So it is our responsibility to safeguard you. So it is a joint effort that we must take. It is a, it is a great, uh, we should work on great strategies. The strategy has to go in three ways. The government to government, two, people to people, three, it, people to social movement in Tibet has to be given an inspiration over a period of time. I'm very sure the global call will come uh, over a period of time to save the Tibet and His Holiness Dalai Lama is, uh, has given his life for the people of Tibet. And I'm very thankful in my lifetime. I feel it is a karmic connection with His Holiness in my previous birth that I was able to meet him in the current uh, time. That's what, that's what people say. And I, I too believe on it. And I'm able to do some transformational work for the Tibetan community. And I'm very sure I will give my life, lifetime and my time uh, for the Tibetan cause and its development. And I'm very happy to be associated with the Tibet TV as well. Thank you so much, Eshi. Uh, this is a wonderful time that I had with you. And as always, thank you so much. I thank the Tibetan TV for giving this wonderful opportunity, Eshi. Thank you so much, Satyaji.